Hello everybody! Today I thought I would share with you guys the story on why I decided to get a corgi. I know a lot of people that know me are like, why did you get a corgi? Believe it or not, at the time, I had never seen a corgi in real life. I, like, corgis were not a thing, and there was very little information or videos online about them. Dude, would you like a Himalayan dog chew? So let's flash back to 2013. My dad got me like a puppy calendar for Christmas and I was kind of like, what? And he was like, I think you should get a dog. You don't have to tell me twice. And then in January, I was already searching all over for what kind of dog I should get. I personally love big dogs. They do a lot of things. They have really big personalities. I grew up with a German Shepherd. However, the building that I lived in at the time had a weight restriction for dogs. You couldn't have a dog that was weighed more than, I believe, 35 pounds. <laughs> what do you think, Gatsby? Himalayan dog chews are basically really, really hard cheese made from, like, yak's milk, I believe? Anyway, back to the story. I actually had my mind set on getting a Shiba Inu, the Japanese dogs. Shiba Inu puppies are so cute. I did a lot of research on Shiba Inus. First off, they don't really act like large dogs, which is like what I wanted. They're definitely a lot more independent and a lot of people describe them to act a lot more like cats than dogs. Um, they're also very, very hard to train. I was like, yeah, I don't really think Shiba Inu is for me. I had seen all these pictures of puppies. There's this one uh, picture with these two puppies and one of them is yawning. Um, and I was like, that dog looks so cute. What kind of dog is this? And at the time, I didn't know about corgis at all. Corgis weren't really that big of a breed as they are right now. I did more research and I found out that, of course, corgis are like a large dog, but in a small dog's body. And I was like, that is exactly what I'm looking for. And there were a lot of features that were very similar to German Shepherds. They have long snouts, they just got the shorter legs. <laughs> Corgalicious stuff. Corgalicious stuff. I live in an apartment and that was another thing was that can I get a corgi? Do they need a lot of space? And I found out that they are very adaptable dogs. During that time, there was very little information about corgis. Like, nowhere near how mainstream they are now. And of course, when you searched online for corgis, you would basically only find information from, like, uh, dog encyclopedia websites, which would have, like, you know, like a small little picture of, like, a corgi that didn't look, you know, the best. It was just like a generic photo of one. They were basically portrayed as kind of like a, like a fat, like chubby dog that doesn't do that much work. Believe it or not, Instagram wasn't really a thing at the time. And on YouTube, there were very, very few videos about corgis. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and from the few videos that I actually did see of corgis, um, there was just something about their look and the way they moved and everything. All I can describe that feeling was like, it was something magical about them. And this is the funny part, everyone that I told that I was gonna get a corgi was against the idea. <laughs> I told my friends, they're like, why would you get a corgi? Like, that's so weird. You should get like a Shiba Inu. My mom was super against getting a corgi too. She complained to our accountant. She was like, oh my gosh, my son wants to get this like dog called a corgi and it looks really dumb. They just look like really fat with like really short legs. And little did she know that her accountant's parents um, were corgi breeders. <laughs> Are you gonna eat the whole thing so fast? He's like, I love this Himalayan dog chew. Yeah? Before getting Gatsby, I had to do so much convincing to people to be like, no, corgis are really cool. And I was thinking, you'll see, there's something really magical about corgis. And I got it, but I felt like a lot of the information online really just didn't show that, but I saw it. It wasn't until I showed them pictures and uh, videos, they were like, okay, I got it. Yes, he is very, very cute. Corgis are really cool. I just knew it. I knew it. The more research I did, the more I was like, yeah, I really like this idea. I'm gonna get a corgi and name it Gatsby. And that's what I did. Gatsby. Gatsby, where are you? Gatsby, come! Gatsby! 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 Gatsby. <laughs> oh, there you are! He's like, are you gonna play with me? I'm 
I'm playing Splatoon. You wanna watch? I am playing Clam Blitz mode right now. We've gotta work together to score off the other team. Get rid of the other players. Oh, there's one right there. It's gonna... Okay, good. Oh, I found another one. There he is. Number three, I got number three. Last one, let's kill him. Woo, we got all four against me. What do you think? We did it, Gatsby, we did it! Yes! Oh! Oh! What a fun game! Last one! Yes! Okay, it's time for us to feed the fish! The self in Tang is eating! When I first got him, um, I noticed he wasn't eating at all. Our pajama cardinal fish, you can see, is he also eating? Our other pajama cardinal over there in the background is also eating. You can see, pintail wrasse right there. He's also eating. This guy is so, so timid though. Other than when I feed the tank, he doesn't come out. He just hides in the rocks. Wrasses like to hide, and they like to sleep under the sand or inside of rocks. And if you don't have that, it really stresses out the fish. As I mentioned before, the self and tang was having a hard time eating any food. He was nipping at the rocks because they like to eat algae, so I put um, seaweed. He would just like avoid everything. But a few days ago, I noticed when I fed the tank, he started eating. And look at my bubble coral on the back. It's little stinger tentacles are like coming out as you can see, the long ones. Those can get really, really long. And that's your quick aquarium update. There it is. <laughs> I thought I would give you guys an update on my Invisalign. This was taken a few hours before getting my Invisalign on. Look very carefully at my bite and how my teeth are connecting in the back, but there's a huge gap in the front. Let me take out my Invisalign first. I am on tray number 32 out of 33. So I have one more tray left out of the initial trays. Right now I have to wear a band on one side to get the bite perfectly aligned. I mentioned my initial trays. This is something that they don't really tell you guys, but um, when you get Invisalign, after the initial trays, there is something called the refinements, which are more trays that you do after the initial trays. And these are done pretty much all the time for pretty much all Invisalign people. They take another mold of your teeth and then go from there to try to refine it and basically do the entire Invisalign process again, but it's shorter because they don't have to move your teeth as much. It's usually just like, you know, adjustments. Having said that though, now my bite, it feels so good to bite down. My teeth just connect so much better. I can feel it across like all my teeth. It turns out it was a really good time to get Invisalign because we're all wearing face masks, so it doesn't even matter. You can be straightening your teeth and no one will even know. It's time for me to head off to the gym. And right now I'm going to this outdoor gym, which is allowed in California. We have to wear a mask. It's great when the weather is good. <laughs> See you guys there. Okay. It is time for us to head back home and continue on with the day. Hey everybody, I thought I would give you a sneak peek at our future merchandise launch, including 
Ta-da! <laughs> Unlike the dad hats, it has a little bit more structure. And check out the back. The back is a snapback. This is corgi on fleek embroidered onto This emblem design was actually relatively difficult to get done. Um, I came up with the idea of using felt and then um, embroidering on top of the felts to get that really cool look. I've also been working on some of these beanies with the emblem here. And by popular demand, people were asking for <gasps> a bucket hat. Check it out, we have the emblem there. <gasps> it's reversible and has the Corgi Paisley print, see? See, there's a corgi here. Keep an eye out. I still have a few more things that I'm working on for this launch. I want to thank everybody so much for buying all of our Valentine's merchandise. Gatsby, <gasps> is it time? Okay, for dinner today, I thought we would try making that viral feta pasta that's been going all over Instagram. Apparently, because of this recipe, the grocery stores in Finland ran out of feta cheese. We'll see about that. All you need is an 8 ounce block of feta cheese, some cherry tomatoes, some basil, garlic, and your pasta. Okay, here we go. Stick all of our tomatoes inside of a oven safe pan. Pour half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, season with salt, pepper, mix tomatoes. Next we place our block of feta cheese in the center here. That's pretty much it for right now. Now we are preheating the oven to 400 degrees. Oh, it hit 400. Make sure it's an oven safe pan that you're using. Okay for 35 minutes. In the meantime, Gatsby's poop is back to normal, but we still have this chicken and white rice recipe. Do you want it? Yes? The leg is up. Dinner time. There you go, go ahead. In the meantime, we are gonna boil our pasta noodles. So we have orecchiette over here. Orecchiette means like little ears in Italian. I remember learning that in culinary class. They say two cloves. Here's our basil. We're gonna salt the water. Add that half. Stop. Ooh. Gotta add the garlic and the basil. Ooh, look at that. And then we mix. Look at that feta cheese. Oh. Okay, let's add the pasta and then turn it off. I think the, the pasta is done. I'm just gonna go like this, transfer it over. Ooh, that looks pretty good. And then you just mix. The pasta water should help thicken the sauce a little bit and it should be done. Check it out. It looks pretty good. Let's see how it tastes. It's very good. <laughs> Since they're like fresh tomatoes, it's not like, it doesn't taste like a tomato sauce. It just kind of tastes like cooked tomatoes with it, which is really good. The feta is like really, really mild, which is nice. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> it's just like very simple. There were very few ingredients, but it's really like each ingredient plays its role. Nine and a half out of 10. I would suggest that you try it out too. Okay, well that's gonna do it for us for today's vlog. I am exhausted. Are you tired too, Gatsby? We're just gonna watch a movie. I don't know what we're gonna watch. Mank, Trial of the Chicago 7. Which one do you want to see, Gatsby? And we'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, Gatsby, check out this awesome fan. Hey, you guys, how many blankets do you think Gatsby will let me wrap him in? Are you ready? Layer one, the tortilla.